Hello and welcome to the next part of my review of the new Blood Angels Codex. So we're getting quite near the end now guys. Um, what I'm going to do in this episode is I'm going to talk through the Relics of Bale. And then in the next episode we're going to talk about the Lords of War. Which should be a quite a short part seeing as there's only two. Um, and that will be almost it. And then I'll do a final part where I talk through my overall thoughts. Give my final verdict. Talk about what I like. Talk about what I don't like. Talk about where I'm going to take my Blood Angels. So... Yeah, really near the end. It's gone very quickly, but nonetheless, let's jump on in to the Relics of Bale. So there's some really nice ones in here, and there's some really mediocre ones in here. So, first of all, we have the Angel's Wing. A model with the Angel's Wing gains the Jump Unit type, as described on the Warhammer 40,000 rulebook. A unit containing a model with the Angel's Wing may re-roll the Scatter Dice to determine their fail position when arriving from Deep Strike, and may also re-roll uh, on the Deep Strike Mishap table. Cool. Furthermore, any models that target this unit as a result of the Intercept Special Rule can only make snapshots when doing so. Yeah, that's okay. Um, it is 25 points, which is a little bit hefty, um, but it's... But I think a jump pack, a jump. If you just take a regular jump pack, I think that's like fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. So it's it's basically a jump pack, uh, but it's ten points extra. And what that ten points extra means is you can re-roll your scatter dice, which is cool. Um, you can re-roll mishaps, and if a quad gun or whatever fires at you with interceptor, they'd be snap fire. Well, that's a bad example because a quad gun would be uh, snap firing at you anyway because you're a ground target. But um, you know, stuff like uh, whatever, anything that's got intercept will be snapped for you, which is a cool bonus. Uh, for 10 points, maybe you could spend the points better, but it's okay. It's uh, it's basically just a, a slightly better jump pack where you get a few more perks. So there's not too much to say there. The Crown Angelic is the next relic, and a model with the Crown Angelic has the Fear Special Rule. In addition, the enemy suffers a minus two penalty to their leadership when taking Fear Tests. Um, we've got a fair few of those in the Codex, haven't we? Regular Death Masks cause Fear Tests. Dan, uh, Dante's Death Mask causes more Fear Tests. Fear of the Darkness, Psychic Power. More Leadership Checks, you know, with a minus two modifier. Um, let's see how much it costs. The Crown Angelic is 10 points. So for 10 points, that's actually quite good. Um, for t yeah, for t a 10 point upgrade, I actually quite like it. If it was more expensive than that, I would probably never bother. But for 10 points, that's quite good. Um, as I've said before, with all of my... Whenever I've talked about Death Mask and stuff like that, in your local gaming club, if you play a lot of stuff that with, like, you know, if you play a lot of Imperial... Play against a lot of Imperial Guard or something, Fear Tests are really good. But the thing I have is I play against a lot of uh, Space Marine players. You know, uh, Tyranids are quite common, stuff like that. And a lot of that stuff is either They Shall Know No Fear or Fearless, I generally find. And obviously Fear Tests don't work on stuff that have They Shall Know No Fear or Fearless, to be a bit weird if they did. So... If, I think it depends what you're playing a lot in your area. In, if you're a local gaming club, there's a lot of stuff where fear tests would be really good against. It's probably a good one to take. If you're playing a lot against a lot of people who play Space Marines or stuff like that, it's probably not that great. But yeah, for 10 points, that's a pretty good upgrade. Um, the Veritas Vitae. Uh, a model with uh, this generates an additional Warlord trait from the Strategic Traits table in the Warhammer 40,000 rules. Um, in the, If the additional trait is the same as the first trait they generated, roll again until you get a different one, which is obviously fair enough. Um, let's see how much that is. 15 points. It's not, not that bad at all. So with this, you can, you can get your Warlord trait. Um, you could take it from Strategic, you could take it from whatever, but then you get a separate one from strategic and my favorite trait section in the warhammer 40,000 rulebook is strategic so that's pretty cool um yeah i quite like that uh for 15 points again maybe you can spend your your money better especially as it's going to be random but it's a nice little bonus um i don't see any problem with taking it it's okay um so yeah you could give yourself you know two, two strategic wall uh, traits and you know i like the strategic wall or traits in the book so that's good um Next up, this one is a big one, and it's the Gallant's Staff, and it's a Librarian's uh, Force Staff. So it's Strength plus 2, 
which is cool because if you're a regular librarian of strength four, so that'd be strength five, six, and on the charge with your charge strength seven, which is awesome. It's only AP four, which kind of sucks, but it is concussive. Fair enough. It has the force weapon because it's a force weapon, obviously. So if you use that as a psychic power, you know, you're trying to get that off in the uh, warp charge one in the psychic phase, then it has instant death, which is nice. And then the the cool thing about it is it's rage fueled. A model with the gallant staff can re-roll any dice rolls of a 1 when making a psychic test, but will immediately suffer a wound, a wound with no saves allowed of any kind, uh, for each re-roll dice that is also a 1. So, suppose you're trying to get off the psychic power, and let's say it's a warp charge 2, and you roll 2 dice, which isn't advisable, if you want that to go off you'd probably put in more, but let's just say you put in 2, and 1 is a 4, and 1 is a 1. So normally, that would just fail and not go off. Because of the Gallant Staff, you can pick up that one and re-roll it. And if it's a four, it all goes off happily. The only issue with that is if you re-roll that one and you get a second one, then you take a wound. No saves allowed, which does suck. But at the same time, I mean, that's the equivalent of rolling a one, picking it up, rolling another one. It's not that likely, is it? You know, um, Pretty long odds. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's... Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, let's see how much its points cost is, though. Um, well, I can't see it under Relics of Bale, so I'm, it's probably under the Librarian or something. So, I'll have to look up the Librarian. Hold on a second, guys. He's right near the start. It shouldn't take long. Uh, the Librarian. Yes, it says it here. One Librarian in your army may replace his Force Weapon with the Gallant Staff. And it's only 10 points. So, yeah, it is good. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact it's AP4. If it was AP3, like a regular four sword, then it would be great. If it was AP2, obviously, that would be fantastic. But, um, you know, concussive is good. Strength plus two is good. Uh, force weapon, obviously, still good. The rage sword thing I quite like. Um, personally, if you don't like it, then fair enough. But I think if you really want to get that power off, it would be pretty great. Um, and it's only 10 points, which is very, very reasonable. So, yeah. And now we get on to the last two relics, and I really, really like both of these. So, <sighs> Fury of Bale, range 12, strength 7, AP2, pistol, mastercrafted. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have there is a plasma pistol that doesn't get hot, and you can reroll on because it's mastercrafted. So if you give that to someone uh, who's ballistic skill 5, like a um, captain, basically you have, it's basically twin linked, because if you roll, if you miss, you get to re-roll, and he's hitting on 2s, so a 2 up with a re-roll even if you get that wrong, and it can't get hot. So it's basically just a better plasma pistol, and it's better because it's twin linked and also doesn't get hot. So, fantastic, I really like that a lot. Um, Fury of Bale, um, it is 25 points, uh, so it's 10 points extra than a regular plasma pistol. Um, I'll just double check that actually, I'm pretty sure plasma pistols are still, yeah plasma pistols are still 15 points. So yeah, you're paying 10 extra points but it can't get hot, and also it's re-rolling to hit. Is it worth an extra 10 points? I would say yes, you could disagree with me, you could say you'd rather just risk it on a regular one. But if you're gonna give a, if you're gonna give your warlord a plasma pistol, you might as well pay the extra ten points. Make it twin linked, so you can re-roll to hit. Um, make it so it's you know not gonna get roll a one and wound himself. You know, I, I think it's worth that. So yeah, I like the Fury of Bale a lot. And last of all, my personal favourite, uh, Valor's Edge. It's a power sword, but it's AP two. There's nothing else to say, guys. A AP two power sword. Which is just fantastic because, um, well, if you played back in 5th edition as I did, all power swords were like that. But now that power swords have been nerfed and they're in AP3, if you can't get stuff with a 2-up save and you have a power scored, it's really, really ineffective. Just um, I remember I've had it with a Sanguinor uh, where he's charged in against an enemy warlord. The enemy warlords had a 2-up save, the Sanguinors had a 2-up save, and they've just ended up hitting each other forever because both of them have 2-up saves and they can't get by it. Um, but yeah... Um, the Valor's Edge is 20 points, and a regular Power Sword is 15. I hope that's right. Um, 
I'm looking at melee weapons and it says power weapon 15 points, which I, sh I assume to be a power sword. Um, yeah, I can't see anything else where it'll be. So it's only 20 points, so you're paying 5 extra points for AP2. That's even better than I thought it was. I thought it was more points than that. Um, I will take that on my Warlord all day long, pretty much. I think that's great. Um, there's nothing else to say, guys. An AP2 power, power sword. Yeah, big fan of that. So, overall, what do I make of the relics? I'm just going to have to flick on back to the relics. I had to flick to the front there. Please bear with me for a second, guys. Yeah, I'm back now. So, yeah, we got Angel's Wing, just a slightly better jump pack, which is okay. Uh, the Crown Angelic, a very cheap option. If you're playing a lot of stuff, it would be effective. Go ahead. Uh, the Veritas Vitae. Cool, give yourself an extra Warlord trait, quite cheap, fair enough, if you want to take that. The Gallant Staff, I quite like, the only thing that sucks about it is you're sort of nerfing your AP, but, you know, it is giving you a chance to reroll your Psychic Powers. Fear of Bale, I do like, though it's 10 points extra than a regular Plasma Pistol. If you have points, go for it. If you're tight on points, maybe don't go there. And the Valor's Edge, which is only 5 points extra for AP2 Power Sword, so I do like that. So anyway guys, we're getting very near the end of this, this codex review, so uh, yeah, have a fantastic rest of your day guys, and I'll see you soon in the next video.